Hi, I'm Emma Morby. Um, I work with Heritage England um, and I'm also a member of Candor. And I'm going to bring you a case study today for a site we have in High Wycombe, which is Chilworth House. It's a detached care home. It's been closed since 2017. It's just over 12,000 square feet um, and it already had planning permission for 13 flats and an estate office. The reason it didn't have 14 flats is because if it had gone over that, it would have been um, it would have been allocated to social housing. Um, and the property was already on the open market, uh, but the vendor had messed around quite a few times. So uh, we managed to get quite a deal. A little bit of background about me. I work with Heritage England as a company and we specialise in listed buildings, um, forts, churches, that sort of thing. Actually, this particular project was covered by our other company, which is Titanium Wickham Limited. It's held in an SPV um, because this has no heritage asset, no heritage benefit. So we don't put it into the Heritage England banner. Um, but the nice thing about doing what we call a standard build, so the Titanium Wickham build, is that that helps fund a lot of the heritage properties that we buy um, to look to restore them back to their original glory or something completely different. I've basically been in property for most of my life since I left school um, and I've worked on various development ranges from sort of three, 300,000 up to about 10 million GDV and I have a national inventory company which works alongside letting agents um, all over the country. Through this case study, I really want to run through how we negotiated with the vendor because he'd lost trust basically in, in the sales process. Um, understanding your market and location and having a really strong exit strategy is really important at the moment, especially with COVID. Um, creating funding, but we've managed to do it by using very little of our own funds. Advantages to obviously having an in-house builder so Adam Plum is our, is, um, our build director. Um, so all of our construction is run from um, in-house. So here's some photographs of what it looked like um, when we brought it. It already had a partial rip out, not particularly good, I might add. Some of the windows were boarded up. Uh, the outside was in reasonably good condition. It was structurally sound. Um, that's the rear garden in the top photograph that you can see, heavily overgrown. Believe it or not, that is a garden that stepped up in different levels. And that conservatory in the bottom photograph actually has been removed completely now. It's not part of, uh, part of the plans. So to run through a bit about the acquisition, uh, the owner had two sales fall through prior to us approaching him. So he'd, he'd kind of fallen out of love with the building and also the sales process. He'd been trying to sell it for 18 months. So the first hurdle we had to overcome was building trust, basically saying to him that we will do what we say when we say, and that we'd agreed we'd do an exchange completion in 12 weeks. Uh, which in the middle of COVID and around Christmas was pushing it for us. But we really, you know, made sure that we stuck to that. The property had fallen into pretty poor state of repair over three years. Um, the roof, original roof, actually, on the front part of the building had no felt whatsoever, but just slate laid over the top. Um, so water ingress had started to come through. And as I said before, they had a partial rip out. So it was quite difficult to, assign, to, to, to decide where um, something started and ended. And it also had two lift shafts that we had to remove. So to run through the planning, um, the photographs on the right hand side of the screen is the existing site. And then the extra areas that you can see um, are the proposed sites where we've got hatched in red. And that, that's kind of where the conservatory was at the back that we've ripped out. And there's a two story extension going on the back. So it had already got planning permission for 13 flats and an estate office. We didn't really have to apply for any anything extra. Wasn't really anything out of the ordinary regarding planning, fairly bog standard. And we're converting pretty much most of the original building, although the roof in the original building is going to need partial replacement. Most of it's being converted um, and there's about a 20% footprint which we're, we're, we're extending it by. So this is an image of the north and south elevations um, for those of you that are interested and then we've got the east and west elevations. Actually this is on a 45 degree gradient hill believe it or not although the site is fairly level um, apart from the driveway in. And the reason I say that is because they've kind of dug it out and set it in to the grounds rather than 
um, sort of building it at an angle so that you've got front garden and back garden at angles. Hi, I hope you're enjoying the free content. Uh, my name is Matt Siddell. I started Candor in 2017. In 2020, we launched a property academy called Tropolis. If you want to know how you can come and join our fantastic network and work with the wonderful people uh, that we help and support, then click the link below and book your call with me today. Cheers. So we were quite lucky on this site. Um, even in the middle of COVID, we managed to add some value to it. Um, the site was purchased 150,000 below market value, uh, which, which we were lucky as well when we sent out the Savills valuer, they valued the site 150,000 above our figures. Now I say we're lucky, naturally we down value everything when we, when we put in our figures together. Um, so for us, it's not unusual, uh, but it is good that they valued it at that high. Um, C-Bills funded 355,000 of the project, but we also had MES funding and senior debt sat in against it, which is quite unusual for them to fund that you know, sort of that much, basically. We started the project uh, kind of mid-COVID, so we're, we're in the processes of it now. And for us, finding staff mid-COVID is probably one of the easiest things. Contractors, staff, they are... At a loose end, should I say, they're not really doing much. So it worked in our favor. Um, the estate office we plan as an uplift. So eventually we will get planning for it and have a 14th unit. Obviously that unit will remain within the company and we'll probably rent it. It's just one of our rental assets. Something worth noting is, um, as mentioned on the previous slide, we managed to get funding um, of 85% plus for this project. And it was a real mix of senior debt, MES funding and C-bills, which we'll show you later on. Um, we were one of the first development companies in the UK basically to apply for all three types of funding and get it granted, especially when it sits at above 85% on borrowing. Um, we had a few issues with the solicitors halfway through that we were working with. Um, they had given us a fee of basically 6,000 to complete some of the um, commercial document paperwork. And very quickly, they changed that to 15,000 and there was no real justification for it. So we made a change. Um, uh, and it's not for the faint hearted, but if you know what you're doing, it's slightly easier when you do make a change halfway through. Um, and we naturally work at quite a fast pace. Uh, so over the years, we've managed to basically streamline most of our processes, our procedures, um, but every site comes with its fair share of problems. This site, for instance, before we managed to get it to exchange, we realized that the owner hadn't got any um, boundary agreements. So we had to go out and get that. And it was a case of knocking on the neighbor's door and explaining to them, um, we need a boundary agreement, basically allowing us to work up to or close to their boundary. Um, we explained everything, explained what we were gonna do. And within 24 hours, we actually, to be fair, within an hour, we'd had that signed and back into the solicitors. Um, so there are ways in which we work, which kind of work out for us really. So the property is being converted into nine two bedroom flats, uh, one studio flat, and then three one bedroom flats. And they're a mixture um, between sort of studio one beds and twos over each floor, uh, except for the top floor um, where there are two two beds. And that's also where plot 14 is or the estate office is. So it's actually on the top floor. So to run through where our market is placed for the flats that we're building, our target audience really is young professionals or people that want to downsize. These units are fairly big. They have either gardens or balconies. They have um, parking allocated, off-road parking. Um, but the property is also on a no-through road, which is quite nice. So there's road, you can, you can park on the road if need be. Finishes are going to be kind of mid to high end. That's kind of where we're aiming for. Um, and the nice thing about this site is it's five minutes walk from the town centre. Um, uh, it's less, probably a three to four minute walk to the train station. And the train station is perfectly situated. So it's a 30 minute ride into London Marlebone. It's about a 40 minute ride straight into central Oxford. Um, and it's about a 10 minute drive from the M40 or the A404. So it's perfectly placed. Um, to reach sort of every area that you may need to go if you're still working 
So this is some of the CGI's we've had created to give an idea of obviously uh, what the property will look like, what each room will look like. We plan on launching these and selling most of these off plan if we can um, during the six month build process. So getting into the nitty gritty, this will give you an idea of um, how we finance the project. Um, Adam and myself put some money in, and as you can see, it's a really low amount of money considering the amount of borrowing we had. We also had a private investor um, who put a small amount of money in for their return. Um, if you want to read this in more detail, please just pause the slide and then take further information from it. This slide covers um, the GDV, the overall GDV of the units. You'll see that it only goes up to 13 units because that's all we've priced in for, um, and whether they're ground floor, first floor, what size they are. So for High Wycombe, this is um, slightly above the average price for a flat, and it's mainly because of its location. Um, it's, again, local for travel. It's a no-through road. It has off-road off parking. Um, it's completely secluded. And it's on one of the best roads in High Wycombe. So the average house price in, in this road can sit upwards of a million to about 1.2 million. So these flats will command slightly more money because of their location. So running through the rental figures, obviously in the current COVID market, if we're not in a position where we can sell all of the units, then we will remortgage, we'll pay everyone back and then we'll rent them. And this gives you an idea of the rental figures. High Wycombe's rental figures are exceptionally good. Actually, since we've had these, which they've been about three months old, it may have increased slightly since because the rental market um, is pretty strong at the moment in High Wycombe, especially for flats. So the project timeline, we tend to get our project timelines down to a fine art. So we started on the 28th of December um, and we are due to finish on the 30th of July. Um, it's very rare that we overrun on a timeline. If anything, we bring it in early. At the moment, we're about a week ahead of schedule um, from having our team on site. Um, and the aim for us, or the, the ultimate aim for us, is to make sure that we can get everyone on site at the same time, but also abiding by the COVID restriction rules that we've got in place. Um, tradespeople at the best of times tend to work quite closely together. Um, and we have to remind each party that like, for instance, the team of electricians, they are working in that side of the building and the demolishment team are working in that side of the building. And it, and it can be quite confusing. Um, but Adam deals with all of that and he does it very well. So this gives you an idea of the final performance, some rough overview of figures. So time frame actually is nine months. You'll see from the borrowing on the previous slides that actually we've taken it between 15 and 18 months for borrowing. So we've given ourselves some breathing time, but in reality, I'd imagine by nine months we would have exited. Um, six months to build, three months to sell. Um, actually during those six months, I'd hope that I'd be able to sell all of the units off plan. The costs come in just under three and a half million. Um, the GDV is just under four and a half million. Um, and the profit works out at just over a million. Um, it doesn't take into account the estate office. Um, that's not been valued and it's not part of the um, to, a part of the sale. And it gives you an idea, prof, profit on cost is over 30%. Profit on GDV is 23. To be fair, we tend to work at 30% on everything if we can, profit on cost at 30%, um, knowing that we can exit if we need to. But with this particular site, because we had an uplift of the estate office, um, it, it, when we done the profit on GDV, it worked out that it balanced nicely. Uh, some key sort of takeaways that we had from this particular site. Um, like I mentioned previously, there's an uplift with the estate office. Um, uh, now we're hoping that we'll get planning once we've finished this off we'll be able to get planning because it's on the top floor. So it seems pointless to have an office on the top floor. So we'll just apply for planning for one two bedroom flat. And then that two bedroom flat will be worth around about 385,000. The structural drawings that were supplied by the seller were substandard, which we didn't know until um, after we'd done the completion because uh, he hadn't paid for the structural drawings. <laughs> so we could only get them after completion. Um, and the steel calculations were wrong. So we had to give it to our, um, our architect basically to quickly run through and recalculate everything for building control. The selling market at the moment is slightly slower due to COVID and the national lockdown. So we're in a tier four in High Wycombe and then London is in a tier five. So nobody's, nobody's moving as such, so it's much slower. Uh, and finally, managing a build team while on site, as I've mentioned, it can be challenging. 
Uh, there was concerns around Boris Johnson deciding to close construction altogether, which means we'd have to down tools and that would delay our timeline of six months. Uh, that hasn't happened yet, which is brilliant. So everyone's on site. Um, at the moment, there's no restrictions in getting anything onto site. Um, so none of the um, wholesalers have had an issue. So I'd like to um, pay thanks, really, because there were some key players in us managing to get this over the line. Um, and we literally started from start to finish. Um, We've done it in 12 weeks and uh, everyone worked their backside off to get this completed and over the line for us. The National Inventory Company is uh, the rental company that I spoke to you about. So we check tenants in and out of the U uh, in and out of rental properties in the UK. Um, and you can find me in LinkedIn and it gives you a lot more detail about me. Um, by all means, drop me a message if you have any questions about this particular project or anything else that we're doing um, or if you want to be part of anything. So if you enjoyed this video, why not check out some of our other videos? I recently interviewed lots of fantastic people. There's loads of good content in there. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video.